Well, hello, welcome. So today we are gonna look at how to find the electric field due, a, due to a continuous line charge, an infinitely long continuous line charge of charge density lambda. And we want to find the electric field at distance y away from the line. But why? Right there. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we'll look at how a little piece of that line affects the electric field at point X, is the point that we're interested in. So this little piece of a line has a charge dQ. The electric field points away. We'll assume it's a positive charge. Um, this dQ has a symmetric dQ on the other side of Y, dQ. And has an electric field symmetric to, to the first one. If we look at these two electric fields, we notice that the X components cancel out and we're just left with the Y components. So we should add up all our little y components of the electric field, and uh, that will hopefully get us our total electric field. So, well, let's begin. Since we're adding little tiny point charges, we could go ahead and use Coulomb's law for point charges. Electric field is equal to kq over r squared. Now, since we're just interested in the y components, We'll mark an angle theta, 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 and so we're interested in just the vertical components. So in this case, it would be cosine theta. Now, since we're adding a bunch of small charges, we're going to have the electric field is equal to. We're going to add up all the electric fields due to all the small charges. K dQ over R squared cosine theta. So now we need to do some substitution so we could actually take or do the integration. All right. So first of all, we know that the charge density of the line is lambda. So lambda is equal to the charge per length. And in this case, we'll call our length is in the x direction. So we can say the charge per x. So if we multiply both sides by x, lambda x is equal to q. And we take the derivative of both sides. Lambda dx is equal to to dq, and we could plug that in there. Also, we know that our r right there is related to x and y. So by the Pythagorean theorem, r squared, I'll write this down here, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, and let's look at cosine theta. I'll do that in one more color. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so that'd be y over r. And we know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, so this is going to equal to y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now let's substitute the green, the black, and the pink in here. So the electric field is equal to the integral k. dq is equal to lambda dx. All over r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And cosine 
theta is equal to y over x, the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so now let's simplify. We'll take out the constants. K, lambda, and y are all constants, so we can take them out of the interval. K, lambda, and y are all constants. And we have our interval. So, we're left with a dx on top and an x squared plus y squared to the three halves on the bottom. Now let's look at our limits. It's an infinitely long wire, so we could go from negative infinity to infinity, and that would be very acceptable and just perfect. We can use symmetry to make our um, calculations at the end a little bit simpler. If we go just from zero to infinity, that will take into account half of the y components that we need. So if we multiply 0 to infinity by 2, then we have all the y components we need. So we could do 2 times 0 to infinity, the limit of 0 to infinity, and we're good. So that's our limits. Okay, at this point, your physics is done. And the physicists all say, well, look, it's an integral. The mathematicians have already done this integral for us, so let's look it up in the integral table and do it that way. So if you look this integral up in an integral table, you will get this. So if we look at the integral table, we get this. dx over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves equals x over a squared square root x squared plus a squared. That looks just like this, and instead of a, we have y. So we can substitute that in. So we have the electric field is equal to 2 k lambda y times... Now instead of the integral, we're going to take it, we're going to do the integration, so we're left with an x on top. And instead of a, we have y, so it would be y squared, square root, x squared, plus y squared. And we're going to take this from 0 to infinity. Okay, well we have a y squared on the bottom and a y up here, so this cancel out cancels out, and we just have a y on the bottom. So this is going to equal to 2k lambda divided by y then we plug in infinity first, infinity over infinity squared plus y squared square root minus 0 over 0 squared plus y squared square root. Infinity over infinity is just 1, and 0 over anything is 0. So this would be 1 minus 0. So our electric field is equal to 2k lambda divided by y. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it great how it boils down? to just that really simple little equation. Yay! Okay, now I know what you're thinking, that the physicist in you is pretty satisfied, but the mathematician in you is a little bit irked. You want to not have to look this up in an integral table. You want to be able, because you're strong mathematicians, to do this by yourself. So we can. There is a substitution that needs to happen here. Now the substitution, to figure out what the substitution is, that comes with practice. And so I'm going to give it to you. 
What, um, so it, it comes from working a lot of integrals and a lot of trial and error. So we're going to skip the working a lot of integrals at this point and a lot of the trial and error. And I'm going to just tell you what the correct substitution is and then I'll work through the math with you so we could get to the same answer at the end. Okay, so our substitution. We're going to say x is equal to y tangent u. So then we have x squared is equal to y squared tangent squared u. We'll need that for right here. Let me just box where we're breaking off. We're going to go here, and we're going to solve this the long way. Okay. We're going to also need a dx. So dx, if we use the chain rule, y is a constant, so the integral of tangent is secant, and then we'll have to do a d because that's the chain. Okay, so now let's go do our integral. Okay, so we have e is equal to 2k lambda y integral, and instead of dx, we're going to do y secant, and I believe is secant. This is secant squared. Secant squared u. Du. All over. Then we have x squared, so it's y squared tangent squared u plus y squared all to the three halves. Okay, so now we can take out a y from the denominator. So e is equal to 2. I'm going to leave the limits alone for right now. k lambda y integral y secant squared u du all over y squared to the 3 halves and tangent squared u plus 1 to the 3 halves. Okay. So, y squared to the 3 halves is y cubed. And then we have two y's on top. So we have y, y, y cubed. That just leaves us one y in the denominator. Two k lambda divided by y. Secant squared u du. Now tangent squared u plus one is equal to secant squared. Secant squared u to the 3 halves. We saw this 3 halves right there. So secant squared u to the 3 halves is secant cubed. Secant squared divided by secant cubed is just secant. 1 over secant, right? So electric field is 2k lambda divided by y, 1 over secant u u. Well, secant is just 1 over cosine, so this just becomes cosine u du. Okay, 
the derivative of cosine is sine. So, okay, so now we get down to this point. Now we don't have our limits because we changed x to y. So let's go back and work that out a little bit. Well, we have x is equal to y tangent u. That was our substitution. So we could bring this down and look at x divided by y is equal to tangent u. So we could do a triangle and u is our angle. So triangles, good old friend. Okay, so tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And this is x squared plus y squared square root. So sine u, sine u is going to be x over x squared plus y squared. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go over here. And instead of sine u, we could put back in our x's and then go back to our limits from 0 to infinity. electric field is equal to 2 k lambda divided by y x squared oops, x, excuse me divided by square root x squared plus y squared from 0 to infinity. And if you look that is, that is exactly what we had right here. So we had 2k lambda divided by y, 2k lambda divided by y, x over x squared plus y squared, x over x squared plus y squared, square root on the bottom, from 0 to infinity. So the math is exactly the same, and we are left with e is equal to 2k lambda divided by y. Hooray! Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Look, look at that. Don't you feel so smart?